Speed. Action. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Let me introduce myself. My name is Rupter Pumpkin, which is not, at the time, a federal offense. Is there anyone here from Clifton? Anyone? No? Thank God not. Now, I'd like to begin by saying that my parents are too poor to afford me at a childhood at this age. But the fact is, nobody's really allowed to be poor in Clifton. Once you fall below 11,000, you're exhausted from sake. My parents did, in fact, put down the first two payments of my childhood. And then they tried to return me back to the hospital as defective. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Let me introduce myself. My name is Rupter Pumpkin. I was born in Clifton, New Jersey, which is not a time of federal defense. Um, anyone here from Clifton? Anyone? Oh, thank God not. Now we can all relax. <laughs> now I'd like to say, begin by saying my parents were supportive for me a childhood, but the fact is, nobody really allowed to be poor in Clifton. Once you're really, once you're really poor in Clifton, once you fall below 11,000, you're exiled to sake. My parents did, in fact, put down the first two payments of my childhood. Then they tried to return me back to the hospital as defective. You guys believe that? <laughs> okay. And action. This is all your fault! All of it! What am I supposed to do? I'm 19. You know, that's not mine, is it? Because you fuck half the football team, that's not mine, is it? Knowing you? Knowing you going around, talking to everybody else. You're never loyal, will you? You were never loyal at one point. Look. Just because it's not mine doesn't mean I won't raise it. But I do want to test. Shit, I'd probably be a better parent than you. Just looking at you right now. Probably clean five different guys as fathers. Look, it's not your fault that you're pregnant, but promise me you'll give it up for adoption. And Shh, quiet in the house, please. Hold on. <laughs> Just let it off first and then do the Oh my god. <laughs> okay. Action. I finally decided to visit my family after I left them back home for starting in the United States. I was happy and excited to see my family again, so I called the embassy to request a ticket from them. I got my ticket and I was ready to leave the United States. I arrived early, but they stopped my train. And I got on the first train. Can I redo that again? <laughs> yeah, start from the beginning, just roll. <laughs> okay. Start from the beginning, I finally roll. decided to visit my family after I left them back home for studying in the United States. I was happy and excited to see them again. So I called the embassy to request a ticket from them. I got my ticket and I was ready to leave the United States. I arrived early at the airport and I was waiting for my flight. The flight was one hour late. Oh my god. I started being worried because I had to stop in Chicago and wait one hour to catch the other flight to Germany and then to my country to Saudi Arabia. I got at the first flight and I arrived in Chicago, and I missed the flight from there. So sad, I almost cried. I went to the air flight company to tell them that it was not my fault that I missed the flight, but I found out that they were telling me, we don't have any other flights this week. That was so unfair for me. I just have two weeks vacation to see my family, and I'm losing one week now. Then I got in an argument with them to find me a sooner flight. Finally, they found another flight, in another company flight the next day. Now I have to wait 24 hours to be in that flight. I want a place to sleep. I asked them for a hotel room. I have to pay. I got in my room. I was so hungry I started calling around to see, but there was no takeout. No one opened. I got so upset about what was happening and then I went to look for a place to eat. It was snowing and rain pouring out. I kept walking about half an hour, yay. I say 7-Eleven. The first thing I thought about, how many hot dogs I'm going to eat. I decided to go back to the hotel after I bought 7-Eleven. Yes. I forgot which way I came from. No way I'm lost in Chicago. I kept walking in the rain. 
don't know. But then I found my hotel. And eventually I went home. That was the end of all my sadness. Hey, and action. I finally decided to visit my family after I left back home from studying in the United States. I was happy and excited to see my family again. So, I called the embassy to request a ticket from them. I got the ticket and I was ready to leave the United States. I arrived early at the airport. Uh, I'm gonna restart that. Let's go skip you on. Okay. Keep that. I finally decided to visit my family after I left them back home for studying in the United States. I was happy and excited to see my family again. So, I called the embassy to request a ticket from them. I got the ticket and I was ready to leave the United States. I arrived at the airport and I was waiting for my flight. The flight was one hour late. Oh my god. I arrived early to the airport and I was waiting for my flight. The flight is one hour late. I can't believe it. I started being worried because I had to stop in Chicago and wait one more hour to get the other flight to Germany and then to my country, New Delhi. I got to the first flight and I arrived to Chicago and I missed the other flight from Chicago to Germany. So sad I almost cried. I went to talk to the Germany air flight company to tell them that it was not my fault. <laughs> I missed the flight, but I found out that they were telling me we don't have any other flight tickets this week. That was so unfair for me. I have to wait two weeks to see my family again, and I'm losing one week now. Then I got an argument to find a sooner flight. Finally, they found another flight. And then I went to find a place to sleep. I was hungry when I arrived. Finally, I started looking around and nothing was open. I was so upset with what was happening, I went outside to look for something else. It was boarding, raining outside. I kept walking about half an hour, yay. That's when I saw 7-Eleven. The first, I bought at least seven or eight of them. I forgot which way I came from, the way I lost in Chicago. I kept walking in the rain, hoping to find the hotel, and there it was. Then, everything worked out in the end. And I fled to my country, after all the sad things that happened. Action. You know, it's funny how circumstances have a way of favoring the innocent. I sit down, wait for the chance to pour my heart out. You give me false hope. And then I found, find out that you've been playing me this whole time, and I find out only because I happened to link my contact info with your account, and guess what? I find a second account. To me, that's incredibly shady. And then voila, congratulations, you, you, you had me figure it out this whole time. And now I know that you're a two-faced bitch. But just remember this, you mess with a guy who has five faces, so bring it. And action. You forgot your lines back there. In fact, to say you forgot assumes that you actually knew anything at all. So I'd like to take this opportunity to tell you that you also forgot to go fuck yourself! Don't look so shocked. This is the first time I've said anything, but this, this is not a random outburst. I'm just good at biting my tongue. At this point, though, I've taken too much of your conceited abuse. By the way, calling me weird is actually a huge compliment. Thank you. Now, you've been looking down at your nose at me for this entire project. But really, you're just a naive kid who's never been out of the orange curtain or your family's wealth, which you take for granted. You've never seen much else, but you are so damn sure that your world and your ways are the best and the coolest. And not that you've been anywhere, but wherever you go, you bring the element of high school the sequel. I mean, you might mock people for what they drive and for what they wear and their hairstyles and 
as if life was a goddamn fashion show. Just fucking high school. I think that you think that you know what I am. But you don't have a clue. I'm not going to pretend that I'm cool, but what I've been through could be made into several movies. Which means that I have accumulated a wealth of experience. You, you're mostly your looks. You should be a hand model. There doesn't seem to be a lot of creativity required for that. You are involved with the creative process, but you are not really an artist. So stop looking at me as if you are so fucking cool. People don't like you as much as they like your money anyways. So cut and print and that's a take and wrap and I don't have anything more else to say to you except please don't waste any more of my time fumbling over your fucking lines. And have a nice day. And action. I have a strange feeling with regard to you. As if I had a string somewhere underneath my left ribs, tightly knotted in a similar string in you. And if I were to leave, I'm afraid that cord of communion would snap. And then I have a notion that I'd take to bleeding inwardly. As for you, you'd forget me. I've lived a full life here. I've known happiness. I've talked face to face with what I reverence and delight in, an original and expanded mind. I have known you, Jane, and... Am I become nothing to you? Am I a machine without feelings? Do you think because I am poor, obscure, plain and little, that I am soulless and heartless? I have as much soul as you and full as much heart. And if God had blessed me with strength and wealth, I could have made it as hard for you to leave me as it is for I to leave you. I'm not speaking to you through mortal flesh. It's my spirit that addresses your spirit. And if we'd passed through the grave and stood at God's feet, equal, as we are.